some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Games Unlocked, and Brad and I are continuing our top 100 games of all time. We are in the fourth, top fourth of this entire 100. It goes by fast whenever you uh, really think about it, that it's yeah. like, man, just three more and we're at the at the top 10. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with... Oh, really quick, hold on, freeze. I'm going to tell you how many, we really want to discuss how many we have went up and down. Before That's we... what I was about to say, yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought you were getting ready to say, talk about your first game. Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, let's see. For this segment, I have, where are we at? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, I have three that fell, three new ones, and four that rose. I have two that fell, so finally starting to reverse that trend. <laughs> four that went up and four new ones. Nice. Okay, cool. Yeah, we're going to actually start talking about games that you like. <laughs> uh, which, my number 40 uh, was a game that I believe, was this already on your list? I cannot remember. Um, it was number 78 last year, so uh, and it was new last year, and it's just one of Alexander Pfister's, uh best games. Like, I really like it. I mean, at this point... Well, I haven't played Cloud Age, but uh, the only one of his games that isn't on my top 100 is uh, Blackout Hong Kong. But this one is Boom. Boom oh, yes. Lake. I can't remember if it was on your list or not. Um, um, it has not been talked about yet. So I don't okay. Believe. Cool. Well, uh, actually, at this point, they have uh, released an expansion, which I have not had a chance to try. Um but kind of like a lot of his other games, it's it feels kind of like a rondel, like you're going uh, kind of just in a loop down this river, uh, doing various actions that are on this uh, this track, like this action track, which is kind of um, it's not like a huge mechanism that they have in a lot of games, but uh, whenever it is there, I enjoy it and. Uh, this one is really no exception. I mean, you're going out, you're building uh, locations, exploring, settling down in this kind of like Western techie world. Um, and then also like you have your own personal player board with uh, different techs that you can get and different little boats that you can move around that are going to give you resources to play out on cards that are multi-use to fulfill various orders. It is. I mean, it's it's interesting whenever you try and explain games like this because it's like, so any other Euro? And it's like, no, you don't understand. Right. This one works differently. Um, and it's just like the way that this game comes together. I remember the first time that we had played it, we were like, okay, this game is great. <laughs> like, it's not, again, I mean, spoiler, it's not my favorite of his games, but it definitely shot uh, way up, and I imagine that the expansion will make it even better. But who knows? It might actually make it kind of worse. Uh, I don't know. But, yeah, that is my number 40, Boone Lake. Yeah, and there's the expansion for it, too, that I have not tried yet. Um, yeah. So I'm interested to see what it does and stuff. But, but yeah, we'll... Yeah. We will talk about this probably a little bit later. Okay. Still, oh, cool. So. Something to look forward to. Yeah. So, all right. My number 40 is a game. I. It was 63 last year. I played it once this this past year, and it went up. I want to play it more. I just haven't. It's been a while. Um, this is one you have not played yet. It has um, the awesome art of Mr. Vincent Dutrait as... as mm. Mm -hmm. We both like his stuff, but this one is Merv. Nice. Of the Silk Road or Eno Tool, not not Dimension Trade. Eno Tool. Sorry, I said the wrong. Yeah, so, Eno Tool still. Eno Tool. Yeah, synonymous. Yeah, but um, this game was one of those that my wife actually saw on the shelf and talked me into getting because the if you look at the cover, it doesn't look super, you know interesting kind of it's yeah just kind of a weird deal but then when you you check out the game on the table um there's a lot of interesting um decisions and stuff that you make 
Um, it looks pretty busy. There's a lot of different things going on, but more or less what's happening is that middle square is where you're going to be building your buildings and doing this and that, but it goes, it's a grid based thing. So wherever you place your worker, um, it's going to, you have to do something in that column. And then if you place another, you know, like they start intersecting. Oh, okay. Um, there's a small bit of semi-cooperative stuff to this though, because it has, you're, we're wanting to build up walls because your town will get the, yeah, I guess barbarians or whatever you want to call them. Uh, outsiders will try to attack. So you're you want to build up walls that you're protecting the city, but you're, but if you choose to do that, then you are not spending your time building buildings in the city and improving your stature. Um, but if you don't have walls, then your city is going to burn. You know, it's kind of like one of those mm -hmm. type deals. Um, they're really, I don't think they're going to do anything else with this game. Um, they really don't need to. It's, it's kind of a, it is a, yeah. I mean, it's, it's one of those that surprised me when we got it. Um, it's, it's your tight Euro style game, you know, and, yeah. and, and that, but most of the game takes place in that five by five grid in the center. Yeah, um, they well, they announced another game that looks very similar to this. Mm -hmm. Um, Sankor. Okay. Uh, if you look up Sankor, it it looks basically like the cover of Merv. Um, the Pride of Mansa Musa. I don't know if it's like a sequel. I it seems like they're different, but the cover is almost identical. Interesting. Um, so is it the same designer. Uh, if you go back to the cover, I can tell Fabio you. Lapiano. Yep, yep. It has Fabio Lapiano and uh, Mandela Fernandez Grandon for Sangor. But yeah, like this one's the Heart of the Silk Road. This one's yeah, the Pride of Mansa Musa. So, but it has like that same white silhouette of like a camel and someone else with. I mean, the artwork is gorgeous. Uh, yeah, and the, and the game on the table looks really cool too. I mean, like when it's yeah. This picture kind of it shows it, but it's like when it's actually on the table in front of you, it looks mm -hmm. even nicer. Yeah, I do want to try this one. It's been one that I've been wanting to kind of pick up. And it has a solo mode. So, nice. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's it's not a bad one. It's 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 one of those. There's a little bit of a learning curve. Um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say any more than maybe uh like a Barcelona something like that. You know, there was a little okay. bit of a learning curve on stuff on that, but but uh. But yeah, it's not it's not bad, but it's it's a it's a fun one to to play, you know. Neat, neat. Yeah, well, if you give it a shot, yep. Maybe on the fall this this following time we hang out because we got the we got a we got a <laughs> list to get through this next time. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, I number thirty nine is new to the list, uh, so it's shot way up, and I can actually see this game going up even higher if I continue to play it and all the modifications that they have made. One that's already be, uh, able to be implemented, which helps a lot, but also all the stuff that they added during the second printing. Uh, it just shows kind of how good of designers these guys are for listening and making thematic changes. Um, this is a game that you actually told me about, even though I don't know if you've even played yours yet. Uh, if you even have a copy, I can't remember. But my number 39 is... The oh, yeah, Isafarian Guard. You have played it? Yep, yep. Okay. Uh, I couldn't remember. Um, so the Isafarian Guard is a solo or two-player only campaign game. Uh, we're slowly going to probably start inking into that section of my top 100 where it's like, it's another campaign game. <laughs> oh, it's another story-driven campaign. Uh, oh. Actually, that's actually not true. That's not, uh, I thought it was going to kind of, be a lot of those lately but anyway the ice fairing guard is yeah like i said a one or two player uh, campaign game uh with a very interesting system uh with combat being that it's a chip bag builder uh in our top 10 combat systems ice fairing guard made it but it is a ex like sprawling sandboxy kind of uh campaign the story so far i mean i'm only in chapter in campaign one with uh, Gregory and Alec, there's five campaigns, uh, four of which, as far as I can tell, four of which follow two guards. Uh, and I, I, my guess would be the fifth one kind of lets you pick whoever you want for like the big bad is my guess. I have no idea. Uh, but 
you have a map and you kind of just move around the map and just fight, collect resources, complete side quests, complete major, you know, there's like bounties you can do, there's side quests, there's caravan quests, there's the whole the campaign, there's a city build. I mean, this has a lot to it. And for the most part, they do it really, really well. If you don't play with any of the additions that they kind of have already given, uh, the game is brutal. Like, it's very, very difficult. And it's also insanely grindy. Like, mm. it's uh, like to a point where I don't know how that got past playtesting. I'm, I don't mind a little bit of grind. Um, like, for, you know, if you need money, like, because, like, take, I always have to compare these, like, all campaign games now because I've played so many. Take Madara, like if you want a lot of money or or loot, you kind of kill every enemy in a given mission. Um, you don't have to, you could just run to the exit and leave. But it's like, well, we kind of want to get more money, so let's kill every monster here or go all the, out of our way to go loot a treasure chest. Uh, this doesn't have that. This basically is like you move one node, uh, which is a space, you draw from a bag, it might be a, an event, or it, it's most likely going to be a monster. So you set up a monster fight. You move... Uh, you know half an inch might be another fight and so you need to collect resources that way it was a little much but a lot of the new stuff that they're adding is uh one because you had to fight now they have added to where you can spend kind of like an action point to run away um and some new stuff they're adding allows for you to have like workers that can go out and get resources for you so it the the, uh, the adjustments that they made are really enhancing this game. And the combat is very, very cool. Every character has its own skill tree that you spend experience points to level up. Um, both the characters, Grigory and Alec, play completely different from one another. Um, yeah, and the story I'm enjoying a lot, and it helps a foreteller, foreteller. you know, put, <laughs> yeah, put some <laughs> effort into it. Uh, yeah, so it's it's really, really cool. And for everything that you get, like, the price point of this game it's is nuts. it's like what was it like a hundred and like forty bucks like it, it, was initially... it was 128 dollars for the original pledge yeah. thing and then if you added like i had like the sleeves and stuff mm -hmm. I think. And yeah everything. which is insane because these aren't like cheap chips or cardboard mm -hmm. it's really good production i don't know how they got away with it but i think it worked for them because they were able to go to their second printing and it's it's awesome like I, I, I can imagine this game going, going even higher, but this is one of those companies, Sky Kingdom games that I've kind of started keeping an eye on because I like, I like this game, the, um, the, uh, other one, Dungeons of Infinity that I'm, that's, that's the other one. I was like, what else did they long. do? <laughs> yeah. And then, well, and they did and one before this called, oh. uh, Stonebound uh, Saga. Stonebound. It was the Stonebound Saga. Yeah. So, which I haven't played that one, but was that a know, campaign game? I don't know about. It's Stone a Bound skirmish saga. card game. Well, that's yeah. interesting because they say Stonebound Saga, and you're Stonebound in. Mm -hmm. It's this. the same world, I think. Ah. It's just a different. You know, they have actually, a, they have a world. That's what the 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 the, the um, Dungeons of Infinity, I think, takes place in that world too. Okay. But, yeah, I'm actually looking at some of the art and like they have like a garnet card as like a picture and that's it's the exact same art in mm -hmm. Isofarian. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, you know, at, at a company like this that puts out quality, you know, recessed boards, high quality chips, cool miniatures, all that cool stuff, um and are being successful, those are ones I want to keep my eye on for sure. Yeah, no, I I completely agree. I imagine because they have their own world that I didn't know about. Um, the expansion that they released or the second printing for this game, I think it'll just spawn mm -hmm. more content. Why wouldn't it? It's already insane. So yeah, because I didn't uh, even back this at the original deal. I they I saw a late pledge thing on Facebook. Mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, this looks interesting, and yeah, jumped at that point. But yep. yeah, and. I I don't know how far you've gotten into it. I'm now okay. in chapter four of campaign one. Uh, and there's a guy that works like the caravan quest. Quest. <laughs> His name is Sethius. <laughs> and 
this and luckily those caravan and side quests are all going to be narrated because they're currently right. not and it's a lot of reading but i don't know why but i want sethius to have the most traditional jewish voice <laughs> like i don't know why it would be the funniest thing ever but it's not yeah he's not. everyone has to be the most stoic white male <laughs> like it's like you can't have any any di uh, uh diversion from that um but yeah i i agree now i kind of want to check out stonebound saga and i know you're getting dungeons of infinity yeah, I'm getting all the Dungeon Infinity stuff. Yeah. So, anyway, that's my number 39, Isafarian Guard. All right. Well, my number 39 was 27 last year, so it dropped a little bit. Ooh. And it's not it's not because I mean, I've been I've played it. It's not it's just how I, there's four new games on this list. There's going to be several new on the next one. Stuff's got to shift somewhere. Yeah. Um this is one I think you have the stuff for this game too. Um it was one I showed to you a while back. Um, it replaced an old game that you hated um, that we played a long time ago, and that is oh, yes. Era Medieval Age. I do have this and everything for it. Yeah, I do too. I got all the little boxes and stuff. Have not but... played it since I got it all. <laughs> I don't know why. Like I just well, look at it and I'm like, eh. <laughs> Yeah, so this one is the final version, I would say, of all of Matt Leacock's other games in this deal, like the uh, the Bronze Age and the Stone or the Iron Age and all that stuff that you were rolling rights, more or less. Um, but uh, this one brings in the I'm going to call it a toy factor because it has all the miniature buildings and all that and you act actually instead of just marking it off on a piece of paper you're actually building the buildings on your grid mm -hmm. of, of stuff but it's got the same basis of play where you're rolling you know you're getting more dice you roll those dice you have to feed your people you get to do stuff uh with the dice to um let you build or let you uh gain resources to you know and all the, all this jazz um but uh i i actually you need to get the play mat for this too because there's a play mat that looks like that that you can get on their website that has all the where you can place everything out on it and oh stuff. yeah but um but anyway so you you're doing the same deal but but what's cool is like all the buildings have the special deals like um if you look at the bottom right down here that orange building is a hospital so anything next to that won't get won't cause uh plague or or sickness or whatever they call it um, if it's adjacent to the hospital. So there's all these different buildings you have to do with that. You're trying to wall off everything. Um, you score for all the buildings that you have. You score. <laughs> okay. For... So these buildings are really close together. The plague's going to get them. Let's right. wall it off. Let's, like, right. Right. Not yeah, deal so... with it. <laughs> but um, I like how it is. It's, it's kind of a puzzle because you have to look mm. at where you're placing stuff and when things get. Um, when you have those places that get, uh, can't think of what those damn gray squares are, the, the ruined areas. Um, I don't remember. Yeah. I can't think of what they're called, but the little gray things, they like sport, like pick up space and they don't count as anything, but they, they limit where you build and stuff. And there is a limit to the amount of buildings and walls because the walls come into all different sizes, you could get a four length or a one length, but they're all going to cost the same thing. So you have to kind of, you're racing against other people to get those out. Um, and this, this is just the best version of all those other games that he did, you know? And, and uh, if you get the expansion, it adds uh, rivers and roads. So that adds more stuff. So there's new buildings that you want a building next to rivers to do stuff and odds and ends. There's also expansion, like collector yeah, five sets collector whatever, but... sets which are a pain in the ass to get yeah you have I, to, like... I had to get them from their website the... i had to get them from gen con actually oh, really? i just yeah. ordered from the from the overseas to the at the company but mm -hmm. but anyway i mean this is one it has a solo mode um it's it plays good with all counts though whether you're playing with two three four i mean because you, you have dirt and different more buildings depending on your player count so it's not like you run out any faster yeah um, and stuff so it's yeah i mean this some of the things like the when you roll the the bad symbols if it like hurts other people like in a more more player game it hurts more people which 
if you're that kind of player, then that's you like that better. But yeah, in a two player game, it's not going to affect as much. I found this game wasn't as brutal. Like the die it's rolling uh, yeah. wasn't like, well, I lost. You know, like the roll through the ages was just kind of like, yay, <laughs> plague, <laughs> plague, <laughs> plague. I mean, I guess yeah, my entire civilization is dead. Um, yeah, there's a I, lot I of do... recoup on this game. Uh, yeah, that's true. I would say you kind of do need the expansion just because it gives you a ton of variety of right. building types, which is good. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, good, good pick. Yep, yep. My number 38 is, uh, it fell, it was 21 last year, and it was number 11 in 2021. And this is going to be a game that will rise and fall as I play it. And it rose super high in 2021 because I played it, because uh, I think, I'm trying to remember yes i think shit did i get married in 2020 or 2021 either way it doesn't matter anymore um <laughs> uh, but it's a fantastic game and i implore you to never listen to the dice tower on their their opinion on this game even though they like it the what they say about it is so weird is uh so my number 38 is rising sun uh, so before going into this game, for some weird reason, they the Dice Tower says that there's like no negotiation in this game. I guess that they just don't like to talk to one another is my entire. They actually are only business partners and they're like, hey, I hate you outside of doing videos because this game is 100 percent negotiation. I mean, you can also you can negotiate technically and. A lot of games that don't even really call for it um but there's a specific phase in this game that's called the tea ceremony that is about negotiation and your action so whenever you partner with someone you have like your yin and yang tokens uh that if you partner with someone the actions that you choose to take will give you and your uh ally a benefit so you are implored to talk to people and make deals and trade and promises and like, yeah, those yin yang tokens um, to give both you and your ally a strategic advantage. And I remember the one of the times that I played this game, it was like straight from the get go after I had explained the rules to everyone who was basically new except for one other person um it was like okay so yeah we've got place these are our factions okay now we're at the tea ceremony phase it was like okay hey let's go over here like we all started just immediately making deals and al al alliances and it enhanced this game so much because it was like a full six player game um and something else weird that they said lately was like you don't want to ally with people um you want to be the odd man out I mean, there's definitely reasons to not ally with someone. If someone is too strong, you don't want to give them any more power. But to say that there's a benefit inherently from being your only, you're like the only person, that's not true. And I think this game is way better with more people because you have honor, you have more powers, you have, because uh, you have cards, kind of like in Blood Rage, where you can recruit monsters. Um, like, unlike Blood Rage, you have your own clan ability, um, but you can get cards and stuff that kind of differentiate you even more. Um, but you are unique from the get-go instead of not at all. Right. Uh, yeah, this game is fantastic. Like, the combat, you know exactly where combat's going to be every season. It's like, hey, here's where the battles are happening. And here's how much points they're worth. And you might want to uh, fight for this one in particular, or you might want to take that from someone. So, you, or it's just like there's a lot of ways to just get victory points in this game. It's amazing. And the combat is done kind of based off coins, like how much money you have kind of will influence how strong you are in combat. Um, so that's extremely unique. I mean, honestly, I don't know if I put this one in my top 100, top 100, top 10 combat systems, but it could, it, if I didn't, it should have been considered because you use coins to dictate how well you do uh, for the various uh, combat actions. Uh, but yeah, 
this one is amazing if i'm not if i'm not mistaken i'm trying to find where blood rage was if i've even talked about it i may not have um but yeah it's it's fantastic so that's my number 38 rising sun i would see like i didn't i've never played this game never even tried mm -hmm. Um, mainly because of the negotiation, because I did, I've always not liked that. But after playing a a six player game of Twilight uh, Imperium, mm -hmm. um, and using the negotiating on that and stuff, I kind of don't mind it as much now. So this would be one nice. at bigger at bigger counts. You know, would be a interesting one to to try. Yeah, yeah, no, that's actually, that's awesome, because, yeah, I remember you being huge, like, against negotiation. Uh, see, Twilight Imperium is just changing your life in many well, ways. <laughs> I, I think negotiation, because when you're playing a negotiation game with three or four people, it's it's not as fun. Like, when you have six players, where you oh, can yeah. actually, I think that's what where negotiation hits its sweet spot. And that's why I think I hadn't played a game with that player count in the good with negotiation. That's true. Yeah. With three, so, it's awful. Cause it's yeah. like, Hey, do you and I want a partner? Sorry, right. man. Like, yeah. um, yeah. So this one is, is it's all around negotiation. So I, I don't know what, what game they're playing. <laughs> Maybe they're playing onk and they, 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 <laughs> yeah. Like, God, uh, I can definitely tell you that Ankh is nowhere near my top 100. Oh, no. Me neither. Maybe top you don't 100 it. You don't worst games. It, you don't no, know I don't. Either, so. um, all right, so my number 38 is a game that has been on my list for quite a while since I've owned it. It was 50 last year, so it's jumped up, and I'm actually going to be playing it this evening again because my wife and I really enjoy playing this game at 2. Um, you have it, but I don't know if you've played it yet. Um, okay. and that is Mirage of the Ganges. Oh, you have played. I, okay, good. I have played this. Yep. I I played it like a few times, and then I ultimately got rid of it. Yeah. Um, this was one that um, it mixes some cool aspects, and I think that's why my wife likes it so much. So we get it played quite a bit. Um, but uh, it looks awesome on the table for one. I mean, it's 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 got your your river and you've got all these it's worker placement as a whole um and it has you know the nice translucent dice so you're using the dice so you're placing a worker you're using the dice to do other actions and depending on the number of on the dice and the color of the dice in some aspects will determine what you do with your action um and then it also i what i so the part that is cool about this is it throws in that a slight aspect of like a Carcassonne as well, or like a um, Isle of Sky kind of thing where you have the tiles and you're built, you're connecting roads and you're building out your little area in the forest. So it throws that aspect, which is something I like. And then it mm -hmm. also breaks in the worker placement um, and all that jazz as well. Um, and it just, it's just one of those games where it has, several interesting decisions you can make whether you're wanting to trade out this dice for those or um you also need to be paying attention to what tiles you're building because whatever uh, uh buildings or symbols are on on those tiles can will determine what actions may may or may not become more powerful for you when you do take them um and then there's also you can move your boats up the ganges river um and there's also different things on that that you can do as you go um there's three different spots when you set up the game there's three different spots on the board where you can gain extra workers but you can only ever gain two of them so once you gain two extra mm -hmm. workers and the other one just goes away um but uh but yeah i mean i love worker placement i like using dice placement stuff this goes along with kind of like the lorenzo el magnifico too where you have the dice is the dice number is important and all that stuff and then yeah. when when it throws in the the strategy of how you build out your little your uh empire i guess or whatever you want to call it um it just has some good interesting decisions and it's and it plays really good at two we found and we play it quite often um so 
Yeah. I mean, this is, nice. I want to get those because they have those two, they're called goodies boxes. Yeah. Um, that you can get to have like little modules that you can add in and stuff. I haven't gotten any of those to see what those do. Um, yeah. But... I think those would kind of freshen up the game quite a bit. Yeah. I know they have a few modules out of the box. I yeah. Think. Yeah. Cause there's one that you can do the advanced game where um, it has like, picture actually shows it because when you play a regular game you'll have these in yeah. there anyway for that one but then these tokens aren't there in a basic game and these right. these are new stuff that get tossed in for the advanced uh, yeah this you know, game so. this game for me uh kind of felt i think it was just kind of that era i played this around um concordia where it was like this would probably hit like a seven out of ten for me it's a good game and if someone wanted to play i'd play and i'd have a good time um i was just like i I don't need to keep it. Yeah, I like, really like I really like Concordia. I mean, that's I play this one. Okay, so you've played a lot more of Fister games than I have, mm -hmm. and you played them more. This to me almost is a Fister light. I, I get, uh, yeah, I get, the, I, get the, I get the feeling. I'm not that. saying it's exactly like, but yeah. like I, I sit there and I play like you think about Boone Lake or you think about uh maracaibo and stuff where you have the river track mm -hmm. you know and stuff like a lot of his games have that little track where you sure ruin. so that that's it just gives me that feeling it's, yeah. it's not the same game by any means yeah no but, I, I i definitely see why you would kind of make that comparison that it's like uh this is great value <laughs> alexander fister right 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 but yeah it's just one like i said it's one of my wife's go-tos so we play it quite a bit and it's, yeah because they also did village the yes, brand Inca and Marcus. And then they also did a million exit games, which God, <laughs> fuck, those, those, those suck now. <laughs> I hate them. Um, but other than that, I really remember them from Village. I thought they did. They I'm did looking through all their stuff. Because they did one that Andors, didn't they? No, uh, all the Andors are um, they, they did the kids version of Andor. Oh, okay. my first Andor they did. That's right. Gotcha. Yeah, the Andors are. Oh, what is that dude's name? Legends of Andor. That was Michael Menzel. Gotcha. Which apparently he's still making. He's still making Andor games. Anyway, uh, yeah. So it, it's kind of like, know. yeah. This this is a this is a solid game. I don't hate it. All right, that that's my thing. I was just sorry. I was just looking at their other cool. lists to see what other. All right, my number thirty-seven also spell, uh, which is actually interesting because I have played this recently. It was twenty-six last year and nine the year before. Uh, don't know how or why it shot up to nine in twenty twenty-one, um, but I imagine after having played this again, uh that this might be kind of where it sits like in the top forties, maybe just top fifties, depending on if I um, don't play it for a long time. Uh, and I think that's mainly because there are a lot of games with this theme that are out now that I'd kind of much rather play. Now this game is still fantastic. It's still incredibly thematic and is a lot like for the most part, a quintessential Lovecraft game. And that is Eldritch Horror. Uh, so, I mean, back in the day, like, I used to have everything for Arkham Horror 2nd Edition and everything for this, and couldn't really decide which one I liked better, if I liked the global aspect of, like, hey, this is massive, big, bad, affecting the entire world, or if I liked the more grounded, affecting just Arkham. But ultimately... Eldritch Horror's mechanisms kind of won out, and this is the one that I'd end up playing more. And it's actually really surprising because this game is now uh yeah, it's over ten years old. Mm -hmm. Like this game came out in 2013 and was meant to kind of streamline <laughs> the Arkham Horror game, and then they blew it up with a bunch of expansions uh that is like okay well now it's just a different arkham horror um but if you're not familiar uh eldritch horror is a big lovecraftian 
uh, themed game where you are investigators traveling around the world, dealing with gate, dealing with monsters, uh, going on uh, missions, trying to prevent like complete missions that are tied to the old one. So whichever one that you pick, they all have clues that are specific to them and missions that are specific to them. Uh, and you're trying to complete a number of those to win the game before he awakens. And if he awakens, it's not like the, it's the end of the world. Uh, although it pretty much might be, you can still kind of win. Uh, the game can be insanely brutal. It's super weird because I usually nowadays, really don't like roll to resolve um but that's exactly what this game is everything is hinged on whether you can roll a five or a six uh when rolling dice but i think the atmosphere of this game kind of like supersedes that and because maybe i just played it years ago that it wasn't that big of a deal it just doesn't affect me now because i redid this video for my channel um and yeah it was it was a blast it was a super good time I think that this game just drips in theme. There's just so much like content for it. I think personally with the way fantasy flight is and they just have, I mean, and they might be turned off because Arkham horror third edition didn't do well. I think that one of two things is going to happen. I think they're going to either do it. Eldritch horror second edition. Yeah. Cause there isn't one yeah. or they're going to do a mansions of madness third edition. That one of those two, I think, will uh, will happen um, relatively soon. I feel like Mansions of Madness is more likely to happen just because they have Arkham Horror, the card game they're still pumping out. And that is kind of this, but better. <laughs> um, I don't know. I just have a feeling. I have a feeling that they'll try and cash grab, especially with the way that they're advancing their app uh, system. Right. It feels ripe to kind of just jump in with the Mansions of Madness third uh, either way, this game is awesome. Like, if you ever set aside time, like, to really just do a day out of it, um, because you can play this up to eight people, which <laughs> on my discussion, someone was commenting on, they were like, don't do it. <laughs> like, they, like, they were just really hammering on on how you should never play this with, like, more than, oh, I don't even remember how many said, more than four, uh, which I definitely agree with him, but one of these days, one of these days, I'm gonna do like a full, add every expansion, do eight people, and then be miserable the whole day, probably. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Elder Tor been around ten years. It's it's fantastic. I I think that this game still holds up insanely well. Because one really cool thing that a lot of games don't really do is every location kind of well the locations are color coded. Um. But they have their own deck, like of event cards. So you go to Tokyo or San Francisco or uh, Buenos Aires, I think, are the three purple locations. You go there. If there's not a monster, you just draw the top card. It's like, oh, you're in Tokyo. Boom. Here's a little quick story mm -hmm. blurb. Like this game was doing that before a lot of these narrative driven campaigns were doing it. A uh, lot of text in this. Um that some of them were, hey, if you pass, here's another, here's a pass thing. If you fail, here's a fail thing. Um, so it's just, there's so much, just so much content. So that's my number 37, Eldritch Horror. I've owned this game twice and have got rid of it twice and haven't played it. So. Yeah, I mean, with the fact that your wife doesn't like co cooperative games kind of right. hinders that. Uh, I still think I know a lot of people, you know, multi-hand this. So mm -hmm. I think you'd have uh, a, a still a really good time. And it's nice, though, because it's not a campaign game. Like, it has as much content and theme and, you know, uh, reading as a narrative-driven campaign, except once you're done, you're done. Mm -hmm. And there's not enough, like, don't get me wrong, I love campaign games. Those are a majority of games that I back. Um, but it is nice to finish a game, whether you win or lose, and be like, ah... <laughs> like I'm done. A sense of completion. Um and then you pack it up and then you're done. All right. Well, my number 37 is my first new one to this list. And I can't remember if you've talked about it yet or not. Um, it was one that I'd been looking for for a long time. Uh you showed it to me. Um, I really enjoyed it. So I 
finally found my own copy about the time it got We need to get a lot more creative with kind of how we run these videos um, because there needs to be like a tally, like a ding, every time you mention there's a game I showed you that you like. Yeah. Ding! By the end of it, it's like just this long running thing across the top of people's screens of my tallies to you and <laughs> well, maybe like well, three. The good thing is, is this is the first one that you showed me on this list. Oh, And, it's the first. and none of the other ones on this, I, you showed, this is the only Oh, one okay. in this set of 10 that you showed me first. All right. So, so, ha. Huh. <laughs> um, now there are some on, uh, several on this that I showed you so That's oh uh, okay. yeah so anyway um, this one is heat pedal to the metal Nice. Um, I need to pre-order that damn expansion I still haven't I watched did it it as soon as I saw it like yeah I don't know like I reddit is kind of like it could be a shithole of a website to go to uh, not mm -hmm. as not as much as Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it um But there was a benefit as I was scrolling. It was like, I think it was Boardlandia or something. It's like pre-orders or game nerds. It was like pre-orders available. I'm like, get it, get it. Yeah. <laughs> Just in case I run out of pre-orders. I don't, I don't know how, but. Yeah. So, but anyway, yeah, this is kind of my racing game now. Um, Mm-hmm. I used to be downforce. Downforce has kind of fallen off because this one just is better, more action-y. It's, it's just a race, more of a pure racing game than, Yeah. I think Downforce but is a auction game. yeah, it is. Like, Um, so this one's hand management, push your luck, just like any other racing game, whether it's Formula D or whatever, you're pushing your luck and all that stuff. Um, uh, what I think is really cool about this game in particular is that it has the season aspect where you can, because you can just do a one-off or you can run through a whole like, like Oh, like season a tournament? tournament. Yeah, it's like a, Okay. yeah, like the whole, Like a Grand what do Prix, they call right? it? The championship system, I think Yeah. is what they call it or whatever. And you can upgrade your cars in the, you know, between and all that stuff. Um, I primarily play it solo because my wife doesn't like racing games. So I pretty much just Has run she this tried so this one though? solo. No, Uh, has, she tried it. has your wife tried the solo? No, Yeah. she, she hasn't tried it. You should No, show she, her. I know, I didn't I tried like racing it. games either. And neither did Kat. Like, cause like, she was like, really? And she had a great time. So, I Yeah. mean, this game is good enough to get people to become white trash and go to NASCAR races. She might go to that with you now. I know you're a huge NASCAR fan. Bullshit. But, but, uh, but the solo version of this is awesome. It's difficult. It's so It's good. hell. It's difficult. You can't, I mean, the, the, the AI guys just, just blow past And it. you can make them more difficult. Like they say in the rule book, like the designers, the designers play on this difficulty. I'm like, no, they don't. <laughs> no, Yeah. they, they want to make themselves look cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is, this is, it's just got everything you'd want in a racing game, you know, and plus it comes with what, four different tracks on the base box. Um, and, uh, and it's just neat, the deck building aspect and the, and like I said earlier, the push your luck and switching gear, you know, it's just, there's just a lot of stuff going on and it actually feels like racing when you do it. Yeah. And, and you knew there was going to be an expansion for it because in the box, there was that space for the extra couple cards Yep. and all that jazz and and everything so this was you know days of wonder only puts out one game a year about but Seems most like of the time it. they're most of the time they're bangers and this was kind of a big one for them What'd they come out with before this one? the Because one right I feel before like, it yeah, because I feel like Days of Wonder didn't do anything. Um, mm. Like, until, like, so, yeah. Um, can't remember they did the river Is that it? Because Five Tribes is, I mean, they did expansions to Five Tribes, but at that point, that was six years old. Um, um i mean they've done little ticket to ride things here and there that are yeah, yeah. done and I guess stuff maybe but the Ticket to Ride Legacy game. Um, I don't know. The River was 2018. I and I'm not like I mean I like Days of Wonder. I think that they're definitely an old school company, but they're still relevant. Yeah, I'm gonna guess Ticket to Ride. I don't think they've done anything for like was it Yamatao or Yamatai? Yeah, that was That was 2017. well. They had the river. I think came out since then. I think the river Yeah, was that was 2018. Yeah, they, unless I'm complete, like, it could be, yeah, the Ticket to Ride Legacy was 2023. It had been years, it feels like, since they had published anything.
Yeah, and I, and I think that's not necessarily a bad thing. They don't. No. I guess they did Small World of Warcraft. <laughs> yeah. So, well, so because here's the thing. Spin. Um, this game I had demoed at Gen Con, and I remember. Well, the demoer was kind of ass, and it's like, uh, but I remember they only make you, they only let you do a lap. Which that's not his fault. That's just how you get more people to play it. Right. I actually think that if you teach people this game, like doing a lap is fine if you just want to teach them real quick, but really explain to them that just doing one lap, if you do just one lap, it feels very random. Yeah. Um, but because I didn't really care for it whenever I first played it, I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, I thought it was going to be too random with the deck. And just like, just how you might not be able to cut around corners. And if your teammate or your opponents do, then you're kind of just hosed. But like in this, in this picture, that bank right before, like at the very top middle, that really sharp corner, that, mm -hmm. uh, that can be really close. So if someone cuts it, uh, better than you do in a one lap game, you're kind of like, okay, well I lost. But if you're doing the recommended number of laps, then you can catch up and and win. Like, uh, it's like, oh shit, I didn't make that, but now I have all these good cards, so I'm gonna really start, you know, opening it up to right. catch up. So it it does all balance out. But yeah, and I watched the Dice Towers review, and they were talking about all the content that was in the box. I'm like, okay, yeah, I guess I'll pick it up. And I was, I must have right place, right time, because then no one could get a copy. Yeah. And I just I picked it up spending, on a whim. <laughs> I ended up overpaying for mine. It was a new shrink copy that a guy was selling. And then two weeks after I got it, then it became available again. Yeah. It was pretty much now. I think it's widely available. Um, yeah. You know, this game, this game is fantastic. It's so, That's my 37. Sweet. My number 36 is new to the list. I am not sure if you have this game, um, but yeah, it is a fantastic solo game, although it's a lot to manage. Hell, it's a lot to manage whenever you're playing cooperatively. This game, I have yet to win. I have heard people have won the first scenario. I don't believe them um, unless it just went right on literally everything. Other than that, it is going to cause you to lose. And that is Not a Frostpunk. <clears throat> so Frostpunk is based off of a, a video game. It is a winter post-apocalyptic game uh, where you are in this like valley, like this little valley with this massive uh, heater, like this massive coal heater. And you are essentially managing that, managing resources, trying to keep everyone, uh, you know, alive and happy i guess uh while completing scenarios in this game like the first scenario is you're trying to uh, reach out to all the other settlements that you haven't heard from uh this game is brutal like it is so fucking hard um because you have to manage food you have three different types of workers or well, two but you can have a third of you know regular people engineers and if you pass a law you can have child workers like otherwise that they're they're just kind of there you still have to feed them but it, you can pass laws that will kind of uh it's like hey do we want to have child labor so we have extra workers to do certain things or do we want to have like child housing which just means we don't we can house them easier um you can only do one or the other this is one example of like a law you can pass um, but you have to manage the food. They can all get sick. They can all die. Um, you mm -hmm. have to manage hope and despair and you have to manage, uh, a big thing on this is you have to manage heat. Like how, like there's three different types of buildings that are levels of insulation. So like red um, buildings are a lot better insulated, so they can kind of be further out, but you want to keep yellows closer. Uh, you have to use enough fuel to be able to fuel the thing, but if you use too much, it breaks down. Um, it really is at its core a worker placement game. You send out workers to various actions to uh, 
build buildings, gather resources, go out on expeditions, um, do special building actions. Uh, there's a lot to this game. Uh, like I said, I think that they have made a tweak or a variant to the first scenario to make it easier because no one was able to beat it because um, something goes wrong. Like, it's like you think you're doing well, then just one bad day, and it's like, oh, a child died. Everyone's sad, so we lost. Like, it's it, it could just turn on a dime that, that quickly. Uh, and this game also does kind of what Robinson Crusoe did, but I think a little bit better, is the decisions you make will bring in cards that go into an event deck, but the events are all the same back, so you don't actually know when those are coming up. If they're going to be coming up, um, the, like I said, the laws that you enact will have consequences. It's it's a very robust game. Uh, awesome on the table, especially if you get like the miniature um, thing where like all the buildings have this these sun drop minis. It it just looks really cool. Tons of different scenarios to play. Um, it's it, I mean it's it's a fantastic game. It's up at thirty six and. I am on the side that cooperative games need to be hard because once you beat them, you kind of figured it out. So, like, I mean, I'm not saying every game, like cooperative games, you need to lose every time. But if you win every time, there's no challenge. But I mean, come on, man! Like, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta win once. I've played that scenario so many times, and it, I just I can't do it. Um, but yeah, if you're into these kinds of games, Eleven Bit Studios also did this War of Mine. Yeah. Um, so those kinds of, you know, very morbid games, if you're not into that theme, you're not, if you don't like this war of mine, uh, I mean, it's a completely different game, but it can have, you know, pretty morbid topics. So if you just want to be depressed while you play. Yeah. Yeah. If you just want to be sad, uh, <laughs> just do a game day, just play this war of mine, followed up by Frostpunk, and then just, <laughs> just make sure you have a bottle of whiskey next to you. Um, yeah, I, I love this war of mine. I, I love this one. So, uh, and glass cannon unplugged, I think they're, they're, they're almost like an IP publisher it, now. Well, it isn't glass cannon unplugged it is, aren't they the video game company glass cannon? And then they do kind of like rebellion uh, the sniper elite, cause sniper elite was rebellion and then rebellion unplugged was their board game. Uh, I mean, I may be wrong, but that's what I always don't talk, know. Uh, I do not know. You might be right. Uh, tabletop just, game studio yeah. formed by the group of industry veterans, creator of the highly acclaimed this war on the board. I don't think so. Okay, okay. I just was curious. I um, but the video game aspect for both. Well, of those they games. they they very much do because um, they did this one and they have Dying Light. Yeah, uh, and then they have. I guess I pl I guess they're planning to do Diablo in twenty twenty five. But their next one coming out this year is Apex. Yeah, so see, yeah, they kind of hit the video game circuit, don't they? Yeah, but here's the great thing. Um, because Steamforged also has video game IPs, but they <laughs> suck. <laughs> like, yeah. they have the IP, but they have no idea what to fucking do with it. Uh, Glass Cannon, uh, I mean, so far, I mean, I guess I only have this one to base it off of right now. But the designer of this war of mine is also part of this, so I kind of lumped that together. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I watched a ton of videos on Apex because I was like, Ugh, I don't know if that's going to be any good. And it looks really good. So can't say for sure, but I ended up getting everything for Apex because I used to play that. I wasn't good at it, but I've won a few in my time. Could have gone pro, but I fucked up my elbow. And, like, I couldn't really play anymore. Right I got on. carpal tunnel. Anyway. <laughs> That's my uh, number 36, Frostpunk. All right. Well, my number 36 is the next new one to my list. It's one I believe you talked about a couple of sections ago. Um, this was one that you and I went all in on. Um, we got every single damn thing for it. And it's so much content. But it is my favorite version of this game system. Mm. And that is... Marvel Zombies. Yeah, this was 51. Yeah, so not 51. too far. Mm -hmm. Um, this one, you know, I've I've always been a zombie side fan. I, I did the first few uh 
Kickstarters with the original zombie side, had my issues with some of the rules and house rule different things. Eventually, because it's cooperative, it wasn't one that got played because my wife didn't want to play it, of course. Um, <laughs> so um, I ended up getting rid of all that. And then I never did Black Plague. I didn't do you know, Green Horde. I didn't do any of those other iterations after that. I heard it kept getting better with those after they fixed some stuff. And then, like we'd said, when we talked, when you talked about this, um, we both saw it hit Kickstarter and neither one of us really were going to do it. But then it raised, it raised what, 13 million? Yeah, something like some that. insane and, amount. Yeah. And, and there was so, you got so much, even though we spent, you know, roughly $700 to get everything. But, but uh, it, there's you just still just get so much crap and it's the best version of this game system the zombie side game system um i love the hunger uh, mm. aspect of it that's that's probably one of the biggest things um because it lets you roll more dice you know and there's there's that balance between that and devouring people to gain uh gain those people's abilities um the scenarios are really cool so far the ones i've played Mm-hmm. Um, you and I even played through the the uh, Galactus um, deal. That big bastard. You have to, you <laughs> have to so pick hard. up. You have to actually have to pick up the big fucking mini and move right. it on the board. Yeah. Um, but you can do you know move on to them to do different stuff. I'm assuming that's how that Cthulhu one's going to be like too. I know you can play on him as I well. You, so. I don't know if you actually move on to him though. I, I think remember. you go on the base. I think you go on to the okay. base, but. But uh, but yeah, I mean, this one, you know, you you play the zombies if you play the regular version, so that's kind of cool too. You're actually playing the 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 zombies and you're eating mm-hmm. regular people, and you get to attack the superheroes, um, and gain stuff from that. Uh, there they came out with so many different expansions. One of the expansions actually lets you it's the X Men Resistance actually lets you play as the humans against yep. the zombies. So you've got all these just tons and tons of miniatures. Um, this is just one of those fun ass dice chuckers that yeah. that is what Zombie Side. I get that same feeling I had when I first started playing Zombie Side back in the day before I mm. started what good games were. Um, <laughs> stuff and and this just does really good with it. You know, it's kind of their culmination of all the stuff they've changed with all the other Zombie Sides and brought it up into this. Yep, I agree. And I'm not doing the DC one. No, no, not even <laughs> a little. Need to. Didn't, didn't even look at it. <laughs> no, I, I like, liked that a little bit. Though. I was like, I was like, deceased. Oh, that's a pretty good name. Not even, nope, not even interested. Yeah. So, well, on that, that one that you didn't get nearly as much because you, you only got the zombie versions of some. Like, there wasn't, yeah. couldn't flip flop like you can on this one and play both versions or whatever. Right. So, yeah, it seems like it didn't do as well. No, not at all. So, anyway, that's my 36 Marvel Zombies. Cool. My number 35 is a crossover and new to this list. We were so close. Crossover from this list? Yeah. It, was it Heat? It is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. My, my number 35 is Heat. Pedal to the Metal. I absolutely love this game. Like I said, I was one of the few that I ended up just buying off of like Miniature Market. Uh, just randomly. Like, it was, oh, okay, sure, yeah, it looks good. Like, that's a lot of content. I think I'll pick it up and then play them like this is so much fun. And, yeah, the, the solo variant is is so good. I actually, like, it's one of those, like, it's not just for a solo play. If you have, like, three people, throw in three bots. Boom, they all run off the same right. same deck, and it's going to not feel like a bot is really involved. Like, they somehow we're able to design them where they're challenging uh but still don't feel like they're cheating um so that's amazing the 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 amount of content that's in this box is definitely reminiscent of days of old that you just got a game with content uh cuz it has like yeah it has like a sponsorship uh module it has the the tournament module it has the garage module just a deck of cards that you can draft to put into your deck that give you better tires, better engine, better, more heat, more whatever it might be. There's a weather module uh, 
that could be applied to each track, four tracks in the game. Uh, yeah, this game is overflowing with just content from a core game alone. And then, yeah, the expansion, Heavy Rain, I think is what it's called. Yep. Um, <clears throat> super excited to get that just because more more packs are going to be good. And if I, I mean, just from looking at Days of Wonder with Ticket to Ride, Small World, uh, and Five Tribes, I mean, they're a company that wouldn't shy away from just doing map packs. Memoir right. 44, that's another one. Just, yeah. oh, map pack. Oh, yep. deck, deck pack. Now, hopefully they have the production to not be a pain in the ass whenever you're trying to get it. Mm -hmm. uh, but they they would absolutely do that. I definitely think they uh, underthought the the popularity of this game when they made, <laughs> made, oh, it, when a, they made yeah, it first time. I mean, can you blame them, though? Like, again, I played this yeah. at Gen Con. No one was buzzing about it. No yeah. one was talking about it. You played it, you were like, oh, all right. Um, and and then, yeah, like, they... I understand not the you know, kind of like they're, ah, okay, it's a game we'll release, but yeah, this took off, so here's hoping they continue to support it. I know it'll keep getting the money. Oh, yeah, for sure. So... Yeah, absolutely love this one. And that's my 35. All right. Well, my number 35 fell a little bit. It was 31 last year. So just went down mm -hmm. a few spots. Um, this is the game I showed you. Um, and I don't think you hated this game, but I don't think it was one of your favorites. I don't I don't think you cared for it a ton, but you didn't shit on it a whole lot. And that um, is Merlin. Oh, yeah. The only thing I hate... I don't like about this game is there's barely any dice mitigation yeah yeah you have to get those apples i think yeah the apples the... and there's not a lot to get like like because take uh castles of burgundy like it's dice rolling but you have ways to mitigate it uh way more that was Correct. my only main gripe yeah so this i don't really remember much about it yeah this one i they have a big box that has the expansions i've thought about getting it because i don't have the expansions yet mm. that add like the mordred and other stuff with it but but anyway this is it's steppenfeld so you're going to get points a lot of different ways um and the unique catch to this game is there's a rondelle in the center of the in the center of the board you're going to roll your dice um and then you're going to use those dice to move around your meeple in that middle inner circle and whatever you land on is the action you take um everybody's character or knight, I guess the knight in the round table, everybody's knight has to move clockwise and you can only move your color. Um, but if you use the white die, that's the Merlin die and that you can move the white Merlin meeple um, either way, counterclockwise or clockwise and everybody has a chance to move it. So mm -hmm. there's just a lot of different things you can do. There's a lot of different actions on that wheel um but if you happen to land in one of the segments like right you know the colored segments and the, the, the little i can't remember what they call those the um whatever the little sections of the town i don't know the exact wording that they use but um they have the each they're each color coded and you can gain cubes from there you can place uh influence in those towers uh, you can gain a flag from those towers um and uh, the flags have abilities that you do different stuff. You can gain uh, like soldier things to slot into your or shield things to, to put up in your your board because you'll have at the beginning of every round, you'll know where the the barbarian hordes are coming. So you need to make mm -hmm. sure you at least have a shield there so they don't hurt you. Um, and you also have four different three of them are out on this person's board but there's this lady right here and then there's these other ones there's like the flag bearer the soldier i can't remember the name of them all right now but so where you place those that's what kind of action you take in that in that location and um plus it doesn't really show up that great on this board but there's also a over here there's an area control aspect because there's those hexes oh yeah and you, and you can lay out your people there and like you know if you have a, if the blue took up four sections and you had power in that deal you'd get 
that main point, you know, so it's a, there's an area of control. There's, there's a lot of stuff. And that's why I was saying with it being Stefan Feld, it's a, it's a point salad. You're going to get points for tons of shit in this game. Um, and, uh, like you said, you know, there, there is just, there's very minute mitigation. Um, you can always do get something on your turn. It's not like you're getting hosed out of anything, but your turns True. may not be, your turns may not be as efficient, you know, yeah. like, if you're getting other stuff. So um, I don't know what the expansions add to this. I definitely want to get them because this is one that, again, my wife and I really enjoy playing. And, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, plus it looks kind of, it looks cool on the table in person, you know, with all the colors and stuff, you get that Kingsburg kind of vibe with the colored dice and the way the art is and stuff. Yeah. So uh, the Arthur expansion adds a new Rondell. Okay. Uh, and, the Morgana expansion. Uh it looks like it adds like three new modules. Morgana, Carleon, or Serleon, um, and then a market. Interesting. So hey, the market has uh it new with goods like apples that you can purchase. Interesting. Pretty nice. Uh well, yeah. The Morgana <laughs> expansion looks like it adds way more. Yeah, so I, I figured getting the big box at some point would be worth it since we play it and stuff. But uh, Does Queen Games do big boxes for all their stuff? Pretty much. They, okay. that's, that's what they do. They pretty much put out a big box and throw the expansions in just to get, get people to buy it again. Yeah, because Alhambra <laughs> had a big box and then had like a mega box and then they had a Coliseum box or whatever. Uh, yeah. Village, I think. No, Village isn't, uh, Village isn't, isn't Queen. Queen. But yeah, they... A lot of places do. A lot of Euro companies do the big box because they throw all their modules in there mm -hmm. and stuff. But, but yeah. So this this one's one that was a pleasant surprise when I played it, and uh, yeah, it's 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 a solid one, even though it did fall the few spots. But that's yeah. You know, when you're looking at all the games we play, that's true. All right. Well, from one Rondell game to another. My number 34 uh, was 36 last year, so it rose two spots. It was 63 the year before. Um, this is my favorite in this trilogy. Uh, as far as I can tell, yes, it is, because I'd already talked about the other one. And the first one I'm not a huge fan of. <laughs> um, and that is Viscounts huh. of the West Kingdom. Don't I know for a... One. You haven't played this one? No. Um... I know a lot of people, their favorite is probably Paladins, uh, and then Architects, and then this one. But there was just something about Viscounts that I really, really enjoyed. Uh, and it rose a little bit because it came out with two expansions. Uh, both are great, although do not play them together, because uh, <laughs> you will have the longest game ever, and then this game sucks. <laughs> Uh, cause it gets to a point where you just have every resource and you can do whatever you want. And then the game never ends. Uh, but like I said, this is a Rondell game where you are also utilizing your deck. So kind of like in Paladins, you had a deck that was, uh, used to like, oh, I'm going to play this card cause it gives me influence in this different, uh, section. In this one, you are using your cards kind of on a, on a track, like you play them out. Uh, and then depending on their positioning on your board can give you certain benefits. Uh, one of the expansions will give you treasure chests that you can open that will give you resources and victory points. Um, but like I said, this is a Rondell game uh, where you have one worker that's moving uh, around the board. There's an outer ring and an inner ring. And you uh, will spend movement to either... Uh, you know, build buildings on certain sections of the outer ring that will, you know, of course, give you benefits, kind of like a Shem Phillips game, or the inner, which can allow you to get set collection tokens that will also give you benefits, as well as a ton of victory points at the end. Uh, higher workers, or not higher workers, higher cards, like in a lot of uh, Shem Phillips games. Uh, either trash them for instant abilities or get them in where it's like, hey, every time you do this, you get two coins. Uh, but also there's an area control element of kind of like a pandemic-esque thing where you are playing uh, workers into that castle. And as soon as you have a certain number, like let's say you add a fourth one, they like 
explode and they'll they'll like pan out and then also go up the next level so you're trying to control uh various sections of this castle um and then the way that the game ends which is kind of interesting is you have uh their deeds and debt cards and whichever deck ends like whichever deck finishes out that will trigger the end of the game but you'll score points based off the opposite of what you have so you kind of have that balancing system of okay if i'm going to collect a lot if i'm going to have a lot of debts or have the debt deck end i want a lot of deed cards uh so that's really cool this one just i mean it has a lot of similarities to paladins um i haven't played architects in quite some time but it's interesting how it's part of the west kingdom series and yet it feels the most different from the rest of them mm -hmm. um like paladins and viscounts have a very similar feel uh but paladins is extremely i i feel like it's tighter and viscounts kind of is a little bit more free forming but yeah i really enjoy that card system of hey i'm gonna you know play cards into this river um because i want to push it forward to get these benefits of these kinds of workers that i have out like these cards that are currently on my track uh because i need specific symbols to hire this person or to do this action i really think that's unique um so yeah like this one i mean paladins was it was 61 so yeah um So it was actually quite a ways back, which is surprising. I do really enjoy both of them, so I don't really know why they're so far apart, because I kind of consider them almost the same. Like, Viscounts I have at a 9, and Paladins I also think I have at a 9. Oh, Paladins I have at an 8. So, there you go. That's what one one subjective point difference does is a 30 point difference on my top 100 <laughs> um and the expansions are great get them like they one adds just a ton of new content uh and then another adds um like more modules like public buildings to vi4 uh but also just adds more uh variety so that's my number 34 viscounts of the west kingdom All right. Well, my number 34 is a game I actually brought up when I was talking about Merlin a little bit ago. It was 51 last year. This is one that will just always continue to be on my list because it's a classic. Um, I have the original version of this. I don't want to get the second edition because I don't like the art as well. Um, and that is mm. Kingsburg. So this one, in my mind, was it was it I think it was the first dice placement game that i ever played um this game is old <laughs> i'm trying like i remember uh, 2007 wow so um but yeah and this is the version i have the old the old old school one same um, although i don't think it's uh i don't think my copy says true aunt actually no, i think mine's mine, fantasy flight mine has elfin works on the front actually is what it oh. says so okay so yes i guess it's not exactly but But anyway, um, so this one, like I said, is one of the original dice placement games, to my knowledge. You throw on the fantasy fan, fantasy theme a little bit. Um, but pretty much what you're doing is you're spinning dice to influence these different uh, advisors or the king and queen, different people on the, in the, um, oh, I don't know what you want to call that, in the, the castle, I guess. <laughs> but um and different dice will like they allow you to get resources or gain military power or uh get victory points or get a peek at what's coming and what's going to be attacking at the end of the at the end of the year um but uh you have that deal with the dice where um when you all roll them um that that's how it fits player order So whoever, mm -hmm. you know, and stuff. So whoever is the lowest, I believe, goes first and then so on and so forth. But um, and if a place has dice on it, it gets blocked. So you can, nobody else can go there unless you have that that one purple uh, token. What was it? The convoy? Yeah, something like that. Is convoy caravan. Yeah. yeah, if you have that thing, you can play. You can either build, you spend it to build two buildings 
on a build phase or place that you mm-hmm. use place dice or somebody else had. So it kind of gives you a little variation on that. But ultimately what you're doing is you're going through your, you're influencing these advisors. Um, and then you go through these different phases. There's a building phase. So then you, everybody has their own little air thing over here that you you just like a tech tree. You have to go from left to right in each row and you build up and that gives you different stuff. Um, the to forge a realm expansion um, that is actually included in the second edition. But if you had this one, you had to buy it separately. Yeah. Adds all these different modules, whether it's different strips you can add to, to change your building uh, area. Um, it gives you events that take place. It gives you because in the base game, because uh, one of the modules I add with this every single time is that the when you do the battle phase against the the whatever horde is coming your way um, in the base game, you, you just roll the dice and everybody got that amount of of. So if you roll a three, everybody's military went up three. And yeah. So there was no like way it was deterministic. Like you knew, okay, I'm never, I'm not going to be able to catch up because so-and-so has five military. There's no way I'm going to pass them and be the one that actually wins it. You know, right. The module that has the tokens that you, the one through or zero through four uh, tokens and you, everybody blindly puts one of those out and flips it. So somebody may put four and jump up ahead, or you may put zero the trick with that module is, is what the one that you don't spend at the end of the game, that's how many victory points you get. So there's just different stuff like that. And, and yeah. we've said this before, module expansions are the best kind because you can kind of pick and choose what you want to put in. Mm-hmm. Um, the event ones are always kind of cool because there's two in that small deck that say the king is sick. So if you do yeah. the first one, the second one, if you happen to pull the second one, then the game just ends automatically. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> like, oh, well, nothing to defend. King died. I've never had that happen before. I've had where he's gotten sick, but I've never had the other one come up. Yeah, you only I, don't think do, I... I think you only do what five. So yeah, you yeah I think it's just one event for... per. Yeah, so you year? get just five five years in the game. So you uh, you, the chances of pulling both those are slim. But this is just one of those. I mean, and if you this version you can't get anywhere unless you buy secondhand. So if you real this game is something you don't have and want to play, the second edition is the exact same game. It adds yeah. It has the for to forge realm in it and a couple of it's like well, I think one other little module thing or something mm-hmm. that wasn't in their deal. But to me, this is all I want. I it's you know I didn't feel a need to get the second edition yeah, exactly. with this. I actually played this recently because I was like, is this still yeah. good? And yeah. it is. Yeah, it's it it's very simple, but yeah, it holds up. Yep. So anyway, my 34 is Kingsburg. Sweet. My number 33, Rose. Last year it was 56. So it rose up quite a bit, and it was new last year, so there was no uh, number in 2021. Um this one is it, it's it's interesting because like I have everything for it, but I haven't touched any of the expansion content, which I need to because I know it opens up the game even more in terms of variety. And I know the designer wants to do another expansion that is just focused on uh like more variety, not necessarily like more campaign stuff. It's just like, hey, here's just more cards for the base game. Uh, this to me is probably like one of the best pirate games and that is dead reckoning uh hey other art by eno tool yep um (laughs) so dead reckoning is by john d clare so it has kind of stuff from mystic veil and edge of darkness where it is the card crafting system but in a overall pirate theme so you can uh, kind of like Merchants and Marauders, you can kind of be one or the other. You can just go out and get goods. Uh, you can, or you can just go out and become a pirate and start attacking other players or going after kind of a, oh, what do they call it? Like, not Navy ships, but they're, um, they're like neutral ships you can go after to get, right. to get goods. Uh, this has a lot kind of going on with it in the sense that it is pretty much like a 4x game uh, because you can go out and you upgrade your ship with cannons or cargo or sails. Um, sails allow you to move further. Um, cannons help you in combat and cargo lets you store goods. 
uh, and you're out exploring, you're like trying to get to different islands, and there's an area control element of having the most influence on that island. You can also, if you control it, drop goods off there, but that is a risk of you know, people coming and taking it from you. And there are a bunch of different criteria to meet uh, of overall objectives that you're trying to to finish more than other players uh, to win the game. There's a system in here that allows you to go back to port and kind of like stash money. And that's another way for you to get victory points. Uh, but the real cool element of this game is that card crafting. So it's a deck builder and deck constructor, I guess, that everyone starts off with kind of like the same crew. But when you go to various locations, there are those four de four boxes. Uh, those will have different abilities that you can slot into your crewmates and you can really build them however you want. Um, but the card crafting system is very cool because you never like... You never have a fat deck, like a deck builder, where like you can just have a really thick deck if you don't find ways to trim it down. Here, that's not the case. You will have the same amount of cards. It's just when are you going to start getting your better cards? Do you want to diversify and have all your cards have two abilities, or do you want some, a few with some really mega powerful stuff? It is a, uh, it's really really neat and does it just as well as some of his other ones. Um. Yeah, so I mean, if you're looking for a kind of pirate game, sandboxy in a way, I know all the other expansions. Dead Reckoning. Um, expansions. Yeah, so the sea, the sea dogs, sea dogs. Oh, uh, yeah, Deep Legends, Salt and Thunder, Sea Dogs, Letters of Mark. Those all are. As far as I can tell, yeah, Saga expansion. So you kind of play through campaigns, adding stuff as you go that are unique ship upgrades, unique crew members, uh, unique abilities that will eventually just become module that you can throw into your game. I mean, realistically, you can just throw them in now. But I haven't touched those yet. I really want to. Uh, but without those, I mean, this game is amazing. I like prefer playing this over merchants and marauders even though i own both uh this is definitely more euro but if you want a kind of more wild uh and wacky more fantastical pirate game then merchants and marauders is the route to go i and the combat is interesting too because it kind of has a it's like a dice to, or a cube tower mm -hmm. that you throw cubes in um the more combat focused you are, the higher chance of winning you have, but you're not guaranteed to win because you could land on like the little track section that doesn't give you any crowns, which are how you win, but might give you a bunch of points and you might damage them a lot, but you might not win the combat. Uh, it actually doesn't bother me. Kind of weird that it is in, the, in a game like this, though, where it's like, hey, here's everything that's Euro about it, and then the most random-ass fucking combat resolution. Um but it's fun, like it, it because like losing in combat isn't a big deal, so right. it's not like oh man my game's over because I got sunk. It's because in Merchants and Marauders, if you get like a galleon and you get sunk, you go back to like a sloop, <laughs> and it's like well that sucked, but that doesn't happen here. So yeah, uh, I have both though. I have Merchants and Marauders and Dead Reckoning. I haven't played Merchants in in fucking probably like 10 years <laughs> it's been so long since i played it so yeah this is my number 33 dead reckoning all right well my 33 is probably the biggest surprise to me on this list uh, from this last year it's it's another new one um it is a game that i kept hearing tom vassal talk up um and then chad got it and I kept talking it up so we played it uh, earlier this year, earlier in 2023. Um, and it actually really surprised me and lived up to what they were saying. And that is First, First rat. rat. Yeah. I don't know shit about this game. You need to try it because it, uh, it, I mean, you look at the cover, you look at the title, it's like, <laughs> it's 
this looks like. It doesn't look like a game I would like, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but it is, it's it's super fun. What pretty much the theme of this is that you are all these rats in a junkyard. You're trying to gather resources and you're trying to build a rocket to go to the cheese moon, right? Okay. So, you know, theme. You take it I mean, it's no it. more wacky than bees in space. Right, exactly. But what's cool about this game is, let's see, that's not a super great picture, but um, so pretty much everybody's going to start down here with, you start with two rats. And the movement on this is interesting because there's no dice. You you choose to move one of your rats one to five spaces. Okay. Or you can move two to four of your rats because you gain more rats throughout the deal. Or you can move two to four of your rats one to three spaces as long as they end on the exact same color. So if you notice hmm. these you notice these colors there's the blue yellow orange green so you can move are those not all gray no okay oh, okay i was like, man, like... You, you, get, you get yourself checked out oh no <laughs> okay, my beat, like my color just went away <laughs> so so like you can move one of your workers all the way up to here if you want right and then you're going to gain those resources there's cheese there's you know old cans or just all these different light bulbs, different stuff like that. Um, or if, let's say you had a worker here on this one right here and you had one right here, you could move both of them one space. You land, you, oh, they, okay. have to, they have to stop on the same color, but you're doubling your resources that way. Interesting. Um, so you are gaining, uh, when you gain light bulbs, the more light bulbs you gain, the more you, it, it increases the amount of resources you gain, like when you gain cheese, it makes the theme of that is like the more lit up the junkyard is, the more re, it's easier to find resources. So when you land on the cheese, if you have two light bulbs and you're going to gain three cheese, you know, so you can start ramping up that way. Um, so you uh, if you happen to stop by places like right here, there's that minus six. So there's like a minus seven. Minus twelve. There's those are mm-hmm. purchased. So those are resources you can purchase to gain things. Okay. Um. So and they're usually pretty neat one-time use uh, deals, but you can also choose to steal. And if you steal, you do not have to pay any resources, but that worker goes back to the beginning. Oh, um, okay. Which is something you may want to do. That's a strategy because then if you have a lot of light bulbs, you can start you know, gaining more resources to, you know, to catch up and do different things. Um, and then ultimately you're working your way up and, and you get, you, you have scoring markers. The way this game ends is if you, um, if the player puts their fourth rat into space, that's a way you can win or there, you know, so like a, if they, if they fall off, like the track, if, they're if, gone. If you, get, if you get them all the way up here to the top and they go okay. to space, and then you would gain your another gain another rat. So that's how you okay. gain rat. So once you've sent four of them off at the end of that track, then that's a way to win it. Or um, you have scythe where you have you know the stars where you place the yeah. stars to do. They kind of have something like that too. There's different. There's these different parts to the spaceship that if you spend resources to build a part of the spaceship, you can put a scoring marker down, okay. and and so if you max out and get eight your eight scoring tokens down then you can win that way too um there's just a lot of different stuff there's even these tracks down here you have a mouse track that if you go to certain can't remember which symbol it was that does it but like you can choose to move around you can unlock different things you can get a worker down there there's there's a lot going on and it's it's the, as as cheesy as the cover looks and and the cheesy <laughs> as, as cheesy, cheesy as the theme is nice. right um, there's a lot of cool decisions. It's a really, really fun game. I like this surprised the shit out of me when I played this and I immediately went and bought a copy. Cool. Um, so this one, you know, and it has a solo mode. I haven't tried the solo mode yet, but, um, but yeah, I mean, this is, this one's one too, and it's not a super expensive game either. So, yeah. um, it would be one to definitely try out because it's, it, it's just a surprise, you know? Nice. Yeah. And, is a cool. good one.
All right. Good deal. Yeah, I'll have to check it out. Yep. My number 32. Uh, the theme is actually the antithesis of this one because <laughs> my game uh, uh, contains the natural enemy of the rat. Cats. Uh, it oh, is yep. cats. <laughs> so my number 32 <laughs> is yep. <laughs> Isle of Cats, which I think was already on your list. Yeah, um, I see it was up higher. Yeah, I know. I know it was higher up. Uh, Isle of Cats, kind of funny enough, uh, kind of like first rat for you. Uh, this game surprised me because it features a bunch of just different game mechanisms that almost sound like it was just put together like which oh that's every game but like it just they feel random but yet they come together so well in this game um and i mean it's no surprise i really like polyomino games there's very very few that i don't like um uh, and this theme of like mystical weird cats like on this island that you're the whole theme is like some evil pirate guy is coming to like i guess skin them uh and you're you do you don't you know for some weird reason you're against that so you are going and you're like rescuing them so you need baskets to carry them in you need boots to be able to go out and get them um different sizes and weird shapes of these cats there's a set collection element of uh like wanting families of cats next to each other tons of different ways to get points kind of like feast for odin you have rats on your ship funny enough uh, maybe they're trying to build a spaceship um they're negative points uh but you, as you cover them up with cats they eat them so no spaceship uh, for them they die uh but a really cool element of this game is actually the card drafting that you can keep certain like private goals for you but then if you discard them they become kind of like public objectives for people to score points i really like that kind of has like an ethnos feel if you've ever played ethnos where it's like okay where it's kind of like you you want to like keep certain things but you can only keep so much so the way you're giving up is potential for other people but you might give it also has like fort vibes where it's like you give it certain things up where it's like it might come back to me like but it might not just that those small decisions that make games great um i have everything for this game they really knew their market because on the box lid like when you flip it up it has it has like a target that says place cat here yeah. <laughs> uh which back when i first played this game i it's probably on the channel actually uh i tried to have zelda uh, sit there she was like no <laughs> no man i fucking hate this uh but yeah, like there's a ton of like little modules, little decks you can throw in. They have like a beast module where it's like monsters you can handle or kittens that you can draw from a bag. Uh, it's and the and the weird thing is, the designer of this game made City of Kings. No, oh, really? Which it, yeah, which blows <laughs> my mind because which I guess City of Kings ended up getting like a kind of like a second edition or like an updated rule set i don't know someone just mentioned it on my discussion video for that but it's like man what a night and day difference because i can't even see the design element from one to the other you know how sometimes you can be like oh that's a stefan feld design it's like what <laughs> you made the most weird euro scenario sci -fi, like or not sci-fi uh like adventure game but then you went to a polyomino cat game i don't know yeah. Anyway, ton of ton of different ways to play this game. I love the card drafting, love the polyomino placement. I have like just there's different boards, different ship layouts. There's a ton of stuff here. It's and it, it it's one of those games that you I can't really nail down why I like it so much. You know, there's sometimes where it's like like I, I feel like I spent way longer talking about Isafarian Guard than I am about this one, but I like this one more right now because it just clicks like everything about it i just like so yeah it rose up and and i also love cats so that helps yeah this was one that i uh just got to this last year or so and, mm -hmm. and i just had the base game but it's still we still play it quite a bit yeah yeah i mean base game is great so that's my 32 the isle of cats all right, my number 32 is a crossover from this list. From this list? Mm-hmm. Uh, Boon Lake? No. 
No. Oh shit. Isofarian guard then? Yep. Wow. Nice. Yeah, I mean, I'm a solo player, so this game was right there, you know. And then I also like chip theory games, and I get that you would have just having those chips. I I love weighted chips and games. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's I'm a sucker for that crap, just like with Sniper Elite and then all of chip theory stuff and this. But yeah, um, you know, this was one that um I like the world. I haven't gotten super far in it, but just it's just one of those games. It's just fun to put out and and the story is nice. Um, mm -hmm. And with the new updated, like you were talking about when you talked about it, the updated uh, uh, rule kind of stuff. That yeah, makes to it fix the little... grinding or makes yeah. it a little bit more. Yeah, just weird things that they didn't include where it's like, why do I have to fight every single time to mm -hmm. get one scale? It's yeah. like, and I need eight, you know, from to build this thing back at the fort it's like god no how about we don't fight this and just say we did yeah and i and i like that i just like the basil battle resolution of this you know and, mm -hmm. chips and stuff it's it's this is and the art's neat it, it's, it's just one of those games that just kind of it's it's an obvious pick for me you know yeah. I, just, I just hadn't played it until this you know this year so that's why i kind of uh it jumped this high yeah so, i mean i will say like the combat even though you fight a lot, like it's quick, like it's quick to set up. It's it's only deck based, but still very thematic. Um, so it could have been a lot worse with how much combat you have, or if you had mm -hmm. actual minis and a board and all that. Like imagine if you had to fight this many times in this game as like in too many bones or something. Oh, it'd be like it'd be awful. Yeah. Uh, but the fact it is accessible, but it's still a little much. Um. But yeah, and the characters have great depth to them too. One storytelling wise, mm -hmm. but also build wise. Yeah, like you can yeah. like like Gregory is a very straightforward example, but the way I've built him is very tank heavy, like mm -hmm. high health, high defense. I basically have the same cards that I started with, um, but he has a bunch you can you can make him really support. Uh, what what's the other guy's name? Gregory and oh, Alec. Yes, is it Alec. Uh, yeah. yeah, something like that. Yeah, start on an A. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Alec is uh really kind of crazy because of the potions. Mm -hmm. So he has a ton of variety, and it's funny because like my bag, like I'm playing with my friend, he has like almost twice as many chips in his bag as I do. Um, and I mean it works. It works. I rely on him to do a lot of extra stuff, but yeah, cannot wait to see what the other characters do. Well, yeah, that's what I was going to say. With with all the content in this box, they say that the the five campaigns interweave. So I'm like, I'm curious to see what that is like. Like how? Yeah, because I I, yeah. I was trying to think because it it there's yeah there's five chapter or five campaigns, but eight guards. So it feels like they're paired up, and I almost wonder if they're parallel stories. You know, it, yeah. like, hey, we're in this section of the world happening, but at the same time, whatever's happening with Gregory and Alec, that's all, also it, happening. It all comes to a point. It all comes together at the point. end, yeah. That that's my sense. guess. Um, but even at the same time, it's not a linear narrative story. Yeah, <laughs> it's decision-based, decision, decision based, which is also cool. And the writing is well done. Like, yeah. it's not... The best writing I've seen in board gaming, I think that kind of goes to Osworn, Tainted Grail, and uh, Aeon Trespass. But this is up there. Like this is this is really solid writing. Like I would read a book of this and right. have a good time. Yeah. So there isn't really there isn't much more to say about it. I mean, we've kind of yeah. covered this one in this segment. So yeah. So yeah, the Ice Fairy Guard, my thirty-two. Cool. And the last one for this segment. I almost talked about a different game. Uh, this is the other one that fell. It was 13 last year. It was number four the year before. And I'm going to go even a little bit further. It was number one for four years in a row prior oh, to that. I know, I know it. I know it. What is it? It's Scythe. It is. <laughs> it is Scythe. Uh, and I actually played a full player game of this last year uh relatively and i won by one point <laughs> i have yet to lose this game so uh that makes me feel good um no scythe was a kind of like isle of cats funny enough for the four years i mean the first year uh 
like, yeah, I was enamored with this. Every decision you make kind of has a double-edged sword feeling to it. Uh, but yeah, over the years, it was kind of like hard to pinpoint why exactly I liked this one so much, but everything just kind of clicked. Uh, the world is amazing. The art is phenomenal. Uh, and every expansion just kind of really knocked it out of the park with Wind's Gambit, Invaders from Afar, and The Rise of Fenris. Uh, but the unique factions uh, having like, different special powers um, and that really awesome action resolution like that board where it's like hey okay you're, you can you can't do the same uh paired up actions you pick a different one you can do the top and or bottom action uh that permanent upgrade system of spending resources to make top actions move down so it's like hey now i can move even more and also it's cheaper to build mechs that's brilliant uh, i haven't really seen that in any other game since uh this is a euro game where there's combat but not a lot of it and you think this would be like a war game but it's really not it's like you fight whenever it can get you a victory but you don't really do it a lot um like you're kind of managing population and or popularity and power um yeah like all right whenever i played this as i don't remember who i was uh, which faction I was, but they, um, it was just, yeah, I was reminded about how solid this game is. It's still so freaking good. And I know this game has been figured out to death. Apparently there's a legitimate Jamie Stegmeier mentioned that there is a faction and a board that is legal to like play because you can get like an infinite combo or something like that. Uh, but other than that, like I know people have just really nailed down this game. It is amazing. I do not like Expeditions. Again, he needs to figure out how to do branding because saying it's a sequel to Scythe probably kills that game. I was getting ready anyway. to ask you if it was going to be higher on your list. <laughs> yeah, it's my number four. Actually, I really like Expeditions. No, it's like don't call your don't call your game a civilization game when it's not, and don't call a sequel to Scythe when it has nothing to do with the actual game. Uh, because that sets expectations and. I don't know. But even the gameplay of Expeditions, I think, is so fucking basic. Uh, but yeah, Scythe just really, really works for me. That that campaign, the Rise of Fenris campaign, is awesome. I actually want to kind of redo it, because it's been a while, but that has modules after ever. Once you're done with the campaign, you can just throw in a bunch of new elements into regular games, which I've done. We did that in the last game I played. Um, and yeah, it's it's just super good. Uh, so I was going to, uh, funny enough, I was going to wait, but I think we're high enough on the, uh, in the top 100 that I mentioned this at the very beginning when we started the top 100, mm -hmm. uh, that there was a surprise, uh, a surprise on this list. Do you know what game I have not mentioned yet? That used to be a higher game for you? Mm -hmm. Well, I was thinking earlier because there was a post I sent to you yesterday's top talisman yeah talisman yeah. is not in my top 100 anymore it <laughs> funny enough it is 102 <laughs> like it just missed out which blew my mind um that it didn't actually make it anywhere because i know it was falling like right. last year was like in the 60s i think uh it's 81 actually but it was slowly falling. But yeah, surprisingly, it did not make it, which I just haven't played it in so long. I bet if I did play it, it would sneak its way on there. You need um, to get the or one. maybe the new version. I, I mean, I will get the new one just because Talisman was my favorite game for so mm -hmm. long. I'd love to just see what the new edition is doing. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like the reason why I bring it up now is just because Scythe was my number one for four years. And prior to that, it was Talisman. And I was like, yeah, we're close enough. Yeah. Uh, I should probably <laughs> mention that it's not on the on the top 100 but yeah scythe fantastic game still love playing it and that's my 31 all right well my 31 was 73 last year Ooh, it jumped quite man, it a rose. bit yeah it did um and it's mainly because i spent forever not playing this game because the you know the box cover is god awful the game itself looks boring <laughs> the game itself is god awful but, <laughs> i don't but, know why i like it I got had the game taught to me 
And it's turned out to be one of my favorite in this style of game. Um, just because it's not the, the amount of luck isn't there. You know, there's the, there's no dice rolling. There's no lucky card stuff. Everybody has the same deck of cards and gets to make their decisions off of that. And that is mm. Fordia, uh, 2013 classic. Um, so this one is, like I said, it's not much to look at, but, um, if you like the basis of this game, there's so many map packs out for this game now that have different mm -hmm. setups and different play, you know, ways to play it and stuff that it changes it a ton. And, and what happened, everybody starts with the same cards in their hand at the very beginning of the game. And everybody starts in, in Rome, if you use yeah. the regular and you are playing these cards that will give you actions you know, to do different stuff. Um, everybody also has uh, a card in their hand that they play that lets them gather all the cards back into their hand, which is something that games do more nowadays. But back back when this came out, that was kind of a a uh, not as much used thing. Yeah. But um, you are going to uh, fill out the board randomly with all the different resources at different cities and you have a you have a person like a meeple and then you have a boat so the boats are going to take the sea tracks and the meeples are going to take the land tracks and you're trying to go and get control and build houses in different cities so depending and what's cool you also have a double-sided board if you with the base game because there's a three to five player board that has a bunch more cities available on the one side and then a two to four player that has like 25 or some odd cities on that side. Um, and you are trying to have the most in a region uh, to have control that region as well. Um, you draft cards. Um, so the cards like up in the top right, um, you will get those cards and add them to your deck to be able to use. Um, so they will also, they give you the abilities to do different stuff but they also have different gods they're connected to. Um, mm -hmm. So, and then at the end of the game, those cards are worth victory points. So whoever has the most Jupiter, you know, or whatever, different, different stuff. Yeah. Um, I never, th this, this game and knowing how much I like this game has showed how much I've changed as a gamer because I used to be Mara trash all the way zombie side you know all the just right. dice chuck like crazy this game like i said at the beginning there's no dice you yeah you have to have the strategy of using what's in your hand and you have to pay attention to what the other people are doing with their hand of cards and what they've played and what they haven't played because one of the cards you have in your hand copies the last card they played so i mean mm -hmm. you can kind of do that and so this is a very big euro um and it's kind of one that is a classic at this point yeah. Um, the variety of this game is actually really nice. Just kind of like the different placement, like the shuffling of the resources and where they're going to be at on that little mini map up at the top left yep. is really cool because it's like, hey, let's gather the resource from here and it flips over and then there's a card I think you play that lets you grab a bunch of money. Yes. And it resets everything. That's that's cool. Like I said, like even when you mentioned Raj's, I played these game those games kind of back to back, so it's interesting they were in your top ten for mm -hmm. this segment. Uh. And yeah, I mean, I think Concordia is good too. Like it was kind of like a, is it good enough to keep in my collection? For me, probably not. But yeah, I'd jump into a game and have a good time. Well, and there's the solo, uh, the yeah. solitaire that for this that I have not messed with yet, surprisingly. So I need to try it out because it lets you play all the maps that are released and everything solo. Mm -hmm. with the, with the really and maybe that's what I needed was kind of like the new like variety for maps or something. Yeah, because I, I have three of the map packs, but then I also have the, the Venus yeah. uh, box thrown in with it. That has the uh, fish resource and, mm -hmm. and stuff with it. Um, and there's just maps. Like there was just a new map, the new double-sided board map just got released this week. Um, oh, wow. Okay. So it's like there's, and I don't have all of them, but there's just maps. You can just buy maps to have ultimate replayability of this. And nice. And uh, like I said, it, it takes a good game and gameplay to 
to make a game this boring looking. Keep it true. Keep it in the, <laughs> keep it in That's the true. Kind of like brass, where it's like this game isn't much to look at. Oh, but the gameplay. Yeah. Well, say so this one's twenty three on BGG if you take any account of that. Yeah, but, yeah. With how old it is but, too, because yeah. the way people were raving about it made it seem like it was recent. Mm -hmm. Like, nope, no, nope, this is a old game. Yeah, good pick. So that's my 31. Nice. All right, everyone, that is it for this segment. Only three more to go, and then we will be done. I hope you're enjoying. Uh, let us know what you think of these games in the comments below. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day this for you. Hey everyone, thank you for watching, and I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you would like to see more of my content, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever I upload any new content. If you feel like supporting the channel, you can go ahead and click that Patreon link to be taken to my Patreon, and any help is truly appreciated. Other than that, stick around for any, any other run-throughs or reviews or cool top tens or whatever I feel like putting on. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.